And the last characteristic is assessment, and assessment that's integrated with the task. So if, for instance, you had an examination at the end of your course, um, that would not so much be integrated. It would be more difficult to integrate that, whereas authentic assessment would assess whatever it is the students do, whatever task they do. And uh, there's many examples of, of uh, the ways that we can use authentic assessment. Uh, now, of these tasks, um, my, my research colleague Tom Reeves uh, says that, uh, of these characteristics rather, that it's the task that matters most. The task we set students is the, the, the one thing that you can do to change pedagogy and, and possibly um, improve learning using the technology. Now we set out, we did a major research project uh, where we set out to find examples, this is the web page that came from our project, but we set out to find examples of courses or units that used authentic task as a framework for the completion of an entire semester unit. So if you think about that, we're not going to find too many of those, where one task comprises what the students do over the whole semester. Oh, well, these are some of the characteristics that we were looking for in the tasks, some of which are similar to the ones in, a whole, in a, um, the authentic learning environment. To have real world relevance, be ill-defined, not badly defined, just that the students have to make the choices about how they're going to do it. It's not set out in a step-by-step -step way. That students would work on it over a sustained period of time from different perspectives and with collaboration, with opportunities to reflect, uh, integrated across different subject areas, not necessarily formally that way, but knowledge that they used in, in their course could be used in other courses. Uh, seamlessly integrated with assessment, polished products and different solutions. So there would be no one way to get to Mars, for instance, uh, because of the complexity of it, but there would be different ways to, to do that. Um, but of course we didn't find that many, but we did find some and I'm going to show some of those to you in a moment. But I think it's also useful to think, when you're thinking about authentic tasks, what are not authentic tasks? Sometimes people will try things that have a semblance of authenticity, but we would say in this pedagogical approach that we're taking, they're not that. They're just maybe stories or examples. And I'll give you some examples of these sorts of things. Now, clearly, this is a very meaningful problem to a mathematician. Uh, but you would never give this to a learner because all it would be would be that the learner would have to say, well, what is F, and then match that up. It's, it's a very, very complex and decontextualised problem. It doesn't mean that it's not an authentic problem to someone, but you wouldn't use something like this. This is another one. This would have a lot of implications if you're doing, for instance, computer programming. There are 25 people in a room. How many handshakes would there be if everyone shook hands with every other person? This is a kind of a word problem. It has some, it, you know, it's got people in it. There are people shaking hands. But why would you ever want to know the answer to this question? You know, why not set it into a realistic kind of a situation? Thematic approaches uh, can be quite popular, particularly in schools. For instance, the example I've given here is the Four Seasons, which you could look at from you know, many, many perspectives, from science, from music, the Vivaldi piece of the Four Seasons, poetry, writing poems about the Four Seasons changing from mathematical and geographical perspective. But unless you have a genuinely um, polished product at the end of it, something meaningful. For instance, you could make this very meaningful by getting students to create a website on the Four Seasons for a particular group, for maybe for students who are younger than them. In doing that, they would then um, have a much better appreciation of, of the content that's actually going on, on within that thematic approach. And interestingly, and many of my colleagues don't like it when I say this, but most video games would not, would not be authentic learning environments. And that is not, not all game. I, I do admit that many games do 
teach and there's much tacit knowledge that comes from, from video games. But most games do not require a product. So in not having a product, the students have not really been able to put together something that represents their own work. They're being led oops, through somebody else's um, ideas of, of what, what learning should, ha should occur. So just having a look at those characteristics, e-learning, all, all of these characteristics can be done fully online, in a fully e-learning environment. Um, but the grayed out ones, collaboration, articulation and coaching and scaffolding are perhaps a little difficult to do online. So you could imagine collaboration, we do do it, we have the technology to do collaboration online, um, where we get students, actually it's interesting with different time zones, uh, to get students to collaborate. That's one of the issues that I find is most difficult. But um, the, the, uh, the ones that are bolded are very readily done with technology, where technology has really enhanced them. And then you look at face-to-face, -face, um, many, many of, the, of these can be done very well in a face-to-face -face learning environment. But you'll notice I've, I've um, uh, faded out the authentic context and the authentic task because I think technology is really wonderful for helping to set the scene for that. Um, so, but when you look at this, the really in a blended situation, without doubt, we have the best of both worlds. And um, I just wanted to have a, a quick look at well, what you know, what, what do I mean by by blended learning when I'm thinking about blended learning. I quite like the um, definition by Bonk and Graham in their handbook of blended learning. Blended learning systems combine face-to-face -face instruction with computer-mediated instruction. Very simple, straightforward, and that's exactly what I think of. I think of online as lacking uh, the face-to-face -face component, and I could not imagine a face-to-face learning environment anymore that does not have some kind of technology in it. Uh, and in fact, Bonk and Graham came to the conclusion that all learning is blended learning. And when you think about fully online, there, you can get a face-to-face -face component with, with, blend, with uh, fully online as well. But when I think of it, I think I'm thinking it's a, a subject or a course that's run on campus, you see your students as you're working with them, but you do have a website or you have other technology mediated um, things happening. And what I want to show you now is five examples of, or maybe four, I'll see how I'm going, of um, truly blended, according to that characteristic, uh, authentic learning environments. And these are ones that were done with a face-to-face -face component on campus, but with a wonderful web environment that had many resources and tools for communication. Now, this one here is, um, was done by colleagues at Edith Cowan University. And it's, it's one that's, it's a, uh, I think it was a, a postgraduate research methods course where it used to be taught where students were, the, the subject was divided up into two halves. The first half they did qualitative methods and the second half they did quantitative. So instead of that, this time, they learn research methods by vicariously looking over the shoulder of these two masters students. 